Hey, what's up everyone? It's your buddy Matt here. Welcome back to my channel. If you recall in one of my previous videos, we worked on this 1968 Skidoo Super Olympic with the 370cc engine. In that video, we made the unfortunate discovery that there was rust and pitting on at least one of the cylinder walls, and we didn't really want to go any further because we didn't want to uh, increase our risks of damaging the engine. So in this video, we're going to start tackling that project, uh, removing the engine from the sled and opening it up to see what kind of repairs are required. Are we going to have to go with a complete overhaul or are we going to be able to get away with just some quick fixes? Only time will tell. The only thing I do know is we're going to have a lot of fun as usual. So if that sounds good, stick around. There we have it, the engine's out. Um, I don't even think that it took 10 minutes to get that done. Really, it was just four bolts, uh, the carb cable, the fuel line, the belt uh, guard cover, and the muffler, and we just pulled it out. So uh, we can kind of see the uh, original paint over here, uh, and then this kind of I guess, you know, paintbrush job that was done at some point. But, you know, it did its job because the tunnel is relatively uh, rust-free. Uh, even the front, I mean, overall this machine, you know, I, I think it's a machine that would have probably sat maybe outside or sat along somewhere uh, for a little while. But overall, I mean, it's not rotted out. So anyhow, trying to look at the bright side of some of this stuff. Okay, so I guess uh, the next step is going to be to get this guy on a bench and start uh, the disassembly process. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is start removing all the little goodies that are on here. Uh, we'll start with the coil pack. has not been removed maybe ever so it's a little bit toy still a bit of sauce on that guy got to be careful on these old things that haven't been taken apart in 50 60 years uh, try not to break anything a lot of aluminum parts and uh, you know sometimes the corrosion makes that they kind of create this powder and the powder sort of grips everything up all right, so that guy is kind of loose, but just doesn't want to come free. So uh, plan B, let's, uh, let's remove the actual coils off this bracket over here. And uh, maybe that'll give us a little bit more room to wiggle it around and get it off. Original Bosch's, that's what we want to see. We'll just leave the screws on for now. Do I have a little bit more room now? Let's get the other one off while we're at it. Okay, number two. 
Bosch as well. Good to see. Just keep giving it the sauce until it comes off. Almost there. There we go. All right. So let's reassemble the coils on this just so we don't lose track of them. And, uh, and then we'll carry on and we'll get that carb off. Don't really have to, but uh, we'll get the recoil starter off. Uh, we're gonna take this whole shroud off and the recoil would have stayed on it, but I guess for compactness, when I put it in its storage box, we'll, uh, we'll have the recoil off it. It's only holding on by two bolts. Hopefully the others aren't stripped. Yup. So uh, broken and broken, uh, not that great. Uh, looks like they've already been I guess bored out or oversized. I'm assuming they probably all should have been this size here. And then it looks like they might've been bored out and then the material, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know these engines all that well, but uh, I know that this recoil is larger than a standard recoil because the engine, uh, the fact that both pistons hit top dead center at the same time, uh, they ended up putting a bigger recoil to give you a little bit more uh, moment. I guess moment of force on the uh, on the crank. So, all right. Anyways, carrying on. So I don't know if you guys can hear this. I feel it. There is more movement back and forth here than what I can see the piston moving uh, over here. So there is something loose. Either it's a connecting rod or something in there that. Uh, that's a little bit loose. Um, but honestly, I wasn't really expecting it <laughs> to be any better. So anyhow. So not like it's the first time that this cup has seen a pipe wrench. Let's see if we can remove that nut. Piece of cake. All right, so for those of you lucky enough to have friends or let alone one friend, uh, you guys can hold it. Either one guy holds it up and the other guy bangs on it. I have the puller required to remove it. So uh, just thread it on over here and give it a little zap. Ta-da, easy peasy, we didn't break anything. So here's a little word of advice. Uh, these are magnets. And when you put this down, you know, we work in an environment with a lot of metal shavings. If you put this down on your table like this, or you leave it lying around, they end up picking up all kinds of crap. Like here, there's already a little piece of brush, brush grinder brush bristle. And uh, anyhow, I like to wrap this up in a rag just so I don't have all that furry metal residue that kind of you know, clogs onto there. And then I've seen it in the past where a piece of metal goes in and actually shorts out. Let's say, I think it was touching between the flywheel and the capacitor and I was getting no spark. It was a two cylinder engine, but something as silly as that, putting the flywheel on the ground, getting some metal shavings, it can cause you some issues. So, you know, think about that. We'll just crack them off loose a little and we'll put a bit of lock, uh, Loose one on it. Mm. I think now we're really getting into the area that's never been undone.
I'm just waiting for this can of release all to die. Um, but it's not. <laughs> it's just never ending. There we go. Now, if you've been playing mechanics for a little while, you know that when you take stuff apart, you understand that certain things only go on one way. Like if you noticed, this guy over here can only go on this way here. I mean, maybe it could go on this way, but you would see that, let's say the spark plug holes, uh, the openings over here wouldn't line up, so it only goes on one way. Uh, if you also noticed, I mean, this guy seems to have a bolt pattern that you wouldn't be able to put it on like this, but I have a hunch you could probably put it on this way, and whether or not that makes a difference, we don't know, but you don't have to worry about it because I've made a little indication mark, and I know I'm just going to put it on the way I took it off. That way there you know that everything's going to go back together correctly. When you look at something like a stator plate. Uh, there is an adjustment. It's held on by two screws, one over here, one on the other side. And if you notice real close, uh, that is slotted. So as soon as I take this guy off, this plate's gonna be able to rotate a little bit and that's the timing of this motor. Now, normally you look around and there'll be a punch mark somewhere lining up with the casing and the stator saying, okay, this is where uh, it's located. I checked around, I don't really see one. So we'll go around with our little center punch and make a little mark, just a point that lines up with another point. That way there, when I put it back on, I'll put it exactly the way it was. That doesn't mean that it's properly timed and I might have to move it around, but uh, at least if this engine did work properly, this stator should be at the right spot. So that's just a little, a little tip for all you newbies out there. So they weren't particularly nice. Uh, there's not all that much room to put a mark. Uh, usually the casing kind of goes around a little further and you can put a mark over here and put one on the casing. The only spot where I can put one is maybe here on the corner. <clears throat> that show? Yep. But if you notice now, there are two punch marks that can line up. Uh, it'll not only locate, because this is held on by three bolts, it'll locate where to position it, but then we'll be able to put it exactly back to where it was. All right, let's, uh, let's loosen up and get this, this stator off. There we go. And the electrical system is now fully removed. So uh, just real quick, you could see it still has Bosch points on it, but the condenser has been replaced at some point by a generic. So you can tell by the shoddy solder right there. Don't forget this little thing. So uh, there's not much to it, eh? When you start pulling it apart, uh, that's what's great about two strokes, real simple. If you notice, there's some oil uh, down here at the bottom. The seal's kind of saucy as well, real grimy. Uh, you know, it's normal after, you know, 50 years to have some residue pouring down, but these crank seals are extremely critical. If this crank seal, or I should say, if the bearing starts getting worn and starts wearing out the crank seal, uh, you can start pulling in air from here. And that means that you're not metering the air through your carburetor, therefore getting the proper air fuel ratio. And you end up going to lean. That's how you can burn these motors out. That applies to literally any two stroke motor. Uh, there's a way to test these seals. Um, you can just change them. I mean, if you get up to the point where we're at and you just have access to them, seals are a couple bucks, you just change them. But I'll show you guys, not in this video, I'll show you guys in another video how to check crank seals the proper way with a, uh, with a vacuum tester uh, to check and see if your crankcase is actually holding uh, vacuum 
or pressure. You can do it two ways. So we'll show that in another video. But for today, this is we're just tearing this guy down to see what the damage is. So uh, yeah, so we got all the way down to this side here. That's all taken apart. Let's get the muffler off. And what's good about that is we'll be able to then see through the exhaust ports. And those are the ones that tell us whether or not this engine has ran lean because the side that ends up melting first is always the exhaust side. That's the hotter side. So if you see the piston all strayed through your exhaust ports, you know that this engine is destroyed. Uh, let's take that off and see. So let's try to do this. We're currently looking into the exhaust port of the cylinder that's closest to the front of the machine, uh, the one that we didn't inspect at all yet. So that's the that's the rear of the cylinder wall, or at least the intake side of it. Looks not bad. I don't see any scratching or significant scratching. Now we move up. Now look at the rings. When I move the piston back and forth, you see them kind of generating a bit of oil. That means that the rings are not seized up. Like if this if this piston was all gripped up and seized they wouldn't be moving, so that's a good sign. Now we keep moving. Let's inspect the skirt, and once again, very little wear on the skirt, which is a good sign. So uh, from what we can see on this cylinder, uh, it actually looks not too bad. Let's go take a look at the, uh, the one that had the carburetor on it. So now we're looking at the, uh, the cylinder wall of the intake side of the cylinder that had the carb on it, the one that's closest to the seat. Um, not too bad, however, you do see some discoloration uh, about midway, which is sort of where I guess that piston would have been resting for a long period of time. Now we'll move up and we'll try to remove some of that glare. All right, now let's check and see if those rings are seized. No, you see they're generating kind of an oily, in the movement, I, I kind of go back and forth with my hand on the clutch and you can see that those rings are oily, so they are not, uh, they're not seized in there. And then we'll move, I guess I would move down. Now we move up. And this piston has a little bit more wear on the skirt. Um, nothing major, but it does have some. So even the rings, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but there are some uh, some striations or some lines, some scoring on the ring slightly. So, I mean, nothing catastrophic, but uh, I don't like, there is still like this kind of looseness, tick, 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 tick. Something's loose in there. Um, and we'll, I want to go investigate. So we're going to clean up with some Varsol what we have here. Um, and then we're going to remove the cylinder heads and the cylinders. We'll get a great look at that point of the piston and the cylinders. And we'll be able to determine also how that uh, crankshaft is in the connecting rods. However, you guessed it folks, that's all going to be on the next one. If you enjoyed this video, maybe take a second to like and subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. And stay tuned when we continue this teardown in the next video. Sign it out.